ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் அண்ட் ஸோ ஃபார் வி ஹாவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் லாட் ஆஃப் டாபிக்ஸ் அந்த பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் என்ஜினியரிங் அண்ட் மோட் ரிலேட்டட் டு நியூ லோட் ஜேமீட்டர் லோட் ரன்னர் அண்ட் ஈவன் கிட்டாப் ஸோ வாட் ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஸோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் தி ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் அஷர்ஷன்ஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ and we will see the response assertions with multiple examples so that it will be very useful for you to understand and use it and implement it in your project so first before that i would like to remind you that we have multiple videos on jmeter so we have the jsr 223 assertion videos and then we have various videos on the jmeter listeners and then the preprocessors and then the jmeter plugins and the logic controllers and various other videos on parameterization and correlation in case in case if you have missed it please do visit our channel and we have a lot of playlists in our channel so please do watch all of them in case if you have any queries please comment that in the comment section and please do comment your feedback as well in what you like and what you don't like so that it will help us to improve our channel and then i would like to i'm i'm requesting you to subscribe to our channel in case if you have not subscribed yet please do subscribe to our channel and thanks for visiting and thanks for watching this video so with no further ado let's go to the video so today in this video we are going to see about the response assertion so what is response assertion and why are we going to use it so let's see that so this response assertion control panel lets us to add a pattern so let me just add an assertion so to add an assertion we'll have to right click on the transaction controller or the http request and then go to add and then the assertions and the very first is the response assertion so i'm opening it so what does this response assertion do so this allows us to add pattern strings to be compare against various fields of the request or the response so here we can see we have response of uh, example the fields like the text response or the response code or the response message or the response header and then we have the request header the request data the url sample the document and the ignore status so there are like lots and lots of options we can try it in the response assertion and then even we can apply these assertions to the main samples and sub samples and just to main sample only and then want to lead to sub samples only so sub samples so here we have the samples and then we have even the jmeter variable name to use so we have lots and lots of options and even we can have the pattern matching rules something like the contains the matches the equals and then the sub string and even we can choose either not or or condition in the pattern matching rules and then we can add the patterns to test using the add button at the bottom of the screen we have the add button which is at the bottom of the screen and then we can use it to add the patterns and then if we want to add something from the clipboard we can click on it and then we can add it from the clipboard and in case if we want to delete it we can just delete them by choosing it So this is how the response assertion works. So let's now try this with few examples. So the first example, the example 1 is we are going to try this with the request header. So what are we going to try is so we have let me delete this and then let me run a new test and I will show you what is our expectation what or how you can use it. So here you can see so let me go to the request and here under the get request so this is the url or this is the server name which we are using to test the application so what we are going to do is we are going to get this header the request header and we are going to validate that using the response assertion so what we are going to do now is i'm choosing the request header since this is the request header so here we can see the request header the host name is petstore.octopuff.com so this is the request header and i'm just copying it from here coming back to the response assertion and you can see here i have chosen the request headers and then i'm choosing contains so if the request header contains what 
contains the petstore.octopuff.com then the assertion is passed okay so let's now try this I'm just saving it and I'm clearing this one and I'm running the assertion and click on over an existing file just in case I just want to clear it so here we can see the assertion is passed so to confirm whether it's right so what we're going to do now is I'm going back to the response assertion and so there are two options here so whether it must contain or it should not contain so what I'm going to choose now is I'm choosing it does not contain so if if the request header does not contain this then the assertion will fail right okay, let's now try it so I'm clearing this again going back to view results tree and then running this test again and here you can see it tells that the request header expected not to contain but still it contains it right so that's the reason it's failing so in this way we can try the options and then so the response session okay so now let's try with the second one so the second option is so the second option that we are going to try with the request header is we are going to try with the substring so I'm choosing substring here and what is the substring that we're going to try in this is let me run the script once and then I'm going to fetch this as the substring I'm coming back to the response session adding the substring here and now if I click if I run the test again and here we can see the test has been successfully completed since we have got the value as a substring so in case if we want to try whether it is working right or not we can I'm choosing the not here and then I'm running the test again and now here we can see that the request header expected not to contain but still it contains so that's the reason the assertion has failed here so this is the response suggestion it works with the request headers and now we will try this with the response so let's try this example with the response now so in this example what I'm going to do now is I'm going back to the view results tree and here I'm going to check this particular value in the assertion that is fi the fish and then sw01 so let me check this in the response so for that what we are going to do now is let me choose the transaction controller under the HTTP request so I'm going to add the assertion so it's again same thing the right click add assertions and then the response assertion and now this is going to be in the text response so I'm not making any changes I'm just going to have have it this in the text response and then it should contain and when it goes to add so what we're going to add now is I have chosen this fish sw01 I'm adding it here so let me copy it again And then coming back to the response okay so it's pasted again now so it should contain the text response so what we'll do now is let's run the test again and coming back to the view results tree so here there is no error so which is which tells that the value is present in here and then what we will do now is let's create an or condition so I'm choosing the R condition here so what does this R, con R condition work? So in case if we want to check some of the values, say for example the SW02, let me choose it and let me let me go back to the assertion and then I am choosing the add button and here I'm adding the condition. So it so this response assertion either has to contain the FI SW01 or it has to contain FI SW02. It should be either so let's run this one again and we will see how does it work let's go to the view results tree and yes it's passed so in this way it has worked so it has to either contain the sw01 or sw02 so let's try one more example so what we'll do now is we will add another value so which is i'm adding three so this three is not in this list but still i'm adding to see because 
only it fails in the and condition because everything has to be present but if at least one of the condition is passed then automatically this should pass so that's the reason i'm trying this one so i'm adding this r condition here and then let me run the test again and we will see what happens so this is in some cases it will work where we want to try some different conditions so here we can see although we don't have the 0 1 0 3 but still it has passed so that's the uh, that's how the R condition works so now the third example or the fourth example which you're going to try now is the response code so what we all know what a response code is so for example if we are having a 200 response code that means that the kind the page is working fine and we have got a valid connection so in case if it is a 302 it's a redirected condition and there are several other response codes like the 400 the 404 and the 500 and multiple response codes are there so this will tell us that whether the page has passed or whether the page is failing so what we will do now is let's add a response code so let me choose this transaction controller and i am adding the response assertion so it's very easy to add a response code so just choose the response code in the field to test and then it should contain so what it should contain if it contains 200 as a response code then it is passed so there is nothing to stop but if it is in the other case so let's try this one so if it is a 200 one and when we run this test so let me run this and then here we can see so there is no failures and it's 200 so it has passed automatically let me go back to the request so in case what if what if, if i'm just changing something something like the uh, server name okay so let's run this again so i'm just changing it here only here so here we can see what is the response so here we can see this is not a valid request and see it does not contain the response code is 200 because the request body is not a proper one and then so just to bring an example i'm just doing this so in case if you have any valid one so you can see the request has been failed and here you can see java unknown host exception and the response code has changed so that's the reason it has failed so let's go back to the request and we will make it as a working one and then i'm running it again and this time yeah it worked because the request and re the response is valid one and the response header is 200 so this is how the response code works in the response assertion and then we have various other options the response messages and then we have the response headers we have the document we have the url sampled so you can try all these other options in case if you have any doubts please do comment in the comment section we will discuss that in our other videos if you like the video please do subscribe to our channel like the video and share this with your friends until i meet you in another interesting video it's from us and literal slaw